Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the first international conference on heterostructural materials. May we invite our session chair, Professor Lu Yang, to introduce our upcoming speaker. Professor Lu Yang. Okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming back to the conference. So now we are going to have the second session. Um, it's about heterostructured materials, mechanical behavior. So uh, I'm Yang Lu uh, from Mechanical Engineering Department. So the first talk uh, is a keynote talk uh, by Professor Jacob Huang. Uh, Professor Huang is chair professor in the Material Science Department, also the director of Hong Kong IIS at CTU. So he's a Presentation title is Quantified Hetero Deformation Induced Strengthening in Bimodal Grain Structure. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's uh, uh, listen to Professor Huang's talk. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is Jacob Huang in Hong Kong. Well, I think it has been a long while not to see you all. So I would like to wish you all well and healthy. Next, I would like to thank the organization committee to assign me for this talk. Thank you very much. So uh, let me share my screen for the PowerPoint of my talk. Thank you. Okay. The talk will be on the analytical modeling and experimental confirmation of heterodeformation induced strengthening in multi-principle element alloy. This work was mainly down my PhD student Randy Zhou and I myself, we are both from City University of Hong Kong. Well, firstly, I would like to mention some of the background. Well, the uh, apparent strengthening and or the toughening uh, has been reported recently in some alloy with the uh, heterogeneous microstructures. Experimentally, the heterostructure or the heterodeformation induced, called HDI strengthening, have been quantitatively measured by the loading, unloading, and reloading, or called LUR methods. But uh, we still think uh, we need some analytical or numerical dislocation modeling with more physical meaning for such a heterostructure or heterodeformation induced strengthening. Well, in particular, one of the very important parameters uh, for this kind of strengthening called the effective length of the interface affected zone, IAZ, between the so-called hard zone or the soft zone. So in between there is a uh, a layer, a zone area called an interface affected zone with apparent uh, a lot of dislocation pi r. This parameter needs to be more uh, carefully quantified. So uh, such a heterogeneous structure material uh, for the past few years have been shown some high potential to overcome the strength and ductility trade-off. For example, in 2002, Maurice Huang and his co-author present a superior combination of strength and ductility in pure copper, composed of coarse and fine grain, forming such a heterogeneous grain structures. And the other example is the pure titanium with heterogeneous laminar grain structures 
uh, produced through the uh, partial recrystallization as reported by Wu and his co-author in 2015. Well, similar property were also achieved in many other alloys with the heterogeneous microstructure as shown here. The common features of all those heterogeneous uh, materials contain the so-called hard and soft zone within their microstructures. So to further classify such huge structure material, Professor uh, Zhu Yunjian gave a definition in 2021 that uh, material whose interzone interaction or couplings would produce significant synergistic effects. So uh, recently, uh, there have been a few study strategically tuned the partial recrystallization in combination of some traditional strengthening mechanism, for example, like precipitation hardening or others, as a kind of a heterostructure to achieve ultra high strength, yet maintain decent ductility. Here is one example for the trip still at room temperature reported in 2017. And the recovered yet deformable deformed grains called a DGs add as the hard zone in his system. And the yield stress can be raised up to 1.5 GPA still maintain a 50% tensile elongation, which is very outstanding. So people think this is a, a result um, of such heterogeneous uh, microstructures. Another example done in our own lab is the multi-principal element uh, cobochromin nickel system, also test at room temperature reported in Nature Communication in 2020. The uh, yield stress can go up to 1.9 GPA. And it was also fun in that work that the work hardening shown here can be maintained for a more extended period resulting in pretty okay uh, tensile elongation or 14%, even at such a high stress level. But in this talk, we will only concentrate on the HDI strengthening. We will not to mention any toughening mechanism. So in this work, the key point is that the deformed fine grains can add as the hard zone among the surrounding soft and coarser grains, forming a hard and soft two-zone heterogeneous microstructures, as shown in this EBSD or TM micrograph. Our another work reported in the Applied Materials Todays in 2021 uh, adopt a similar idea show that the partial recrystallized grain structure and the L12 precipitation can simultaneously introduce to form a heterogeneous microstructure as shown uh, by this EBSD or the TN micrographs here. Except for the uh, pretty uh, ultra high strength at room temperature, uh, yield strength over 2.0 GPA was achieved at cryogenic temperature as well. So this previous result demonstrate that such heterostructure or heterodeformation can result in highly promising and balanced mechanical property at room temperature or at cryogenic temperature. 
In fact, uh, we have also explored the tensile response of such heterostructure multi-principle alloy from minus 196 degrees C up to 700 degrees C, as shown here. We found that a sufficiently high tensile strength of 1.5 GPA or 1.1 GPA can be maintained at 500 degrees C or 600 degrees C respectively. Likely a result of the lower diffusion rate in this multi-principle uh, element alloy. And thus uh, there will be some slower disappearance or called slower recovery of such heterostructures. Compared to other FCC uh, multi-principle element alloy, our alloy with heterogram structure did not show any temperature dependent embrittlement like the other alloy and our alloy, no signs of temperature dependent embrittlement, which is important uh, in applications. So the overall mechanical property from cryogenic to elevated temperatures are clearly uh, more competitive to other commercial alloys. Well, for common uh, structure material, there are many kinds of uh, strengthening mechanisms that well, has been well known, such as like grain size strengthening, solution hardening, precipitation hardening, work hardening, dispersion hardening, composite strengthening, and many others, such as the lattice distortion strengthening or the strengthening by the internal stress and so on. And in this talk, we mainly examine the heterostructure or the heterodeformation induced strengthening. Such a heterodeformation induced strength or called the HDI strengthening can be simplified by two stage. At the first stage, the soft zone would deform plastically while the hard zone is elastically loaded by the forward stress. The back stress originated from the pi r of geometrically necessary dislocation start to add to increase the yield strength. At the second stage, uh, when the applied stress reaches the global yield stress, both the soft and hard zone deform plastically. Then the back stress acting to strengthen the soft zone, limited by the forward stress acting to assist the plus deformation in the hard zone. As a result, the effective hardening resulting from the interaction between the full wall and back wall stress is defined as HDI stress. In practical, uh, the contribution of such HDI stress uh, to the overall flow stress can be estimated by the loading, unloading, and reloading, LUR testing. But uh, in this study, we have some motivation. We still think it is necessary and meaningful to develop an uh, analytical dislocation model with more physical meaning to predict the yield stress as well as to parameterize the mechanism. Before we discuss the pi R's in heterogeneous grain structure, let's briefly review the pi R's in the equiaxial homogeneous grain structures, uh, which is more traditional case. It was uh, first constructed by Ashby, Frank, and Navarro in 1951. So under an applied stress, the dislocation will pi r against the grain boundary, shown here, 
and the dislocation density under this condition can be expressed by this equation. Then the uh, equilibrium boundary is rich uh, without the presence of pitch colder forces. This equation was solved by Lefright in 1951. And the number of this equation is given by this equation. The uh, accumulated dislocation near the grand boundary will result in a concentrated stress uh, at the tip of pi r. So the tip stress can be expressed by this equation. Finally, when the applied stress reaches the yield stress, the equation exactly matches the well-known Hoppage relationship. And the derivation has been summarized by Professor James Lee and Professor Russell Chu in 1970. Now let's consider the pi r's in the by model grain structure for our current cases. Two additional conditions should be considered. The first one is the difference in strength between the hard and soft zone. So you know this. Second, we need to find out the interface affected zone, IAZ, which is defined by this plot, this is the interface, this is the IAZ zoom. So during the elastic capacity deformation, the coarse grain, or we turn that as a soft zone, will deform plastically while the fine grain, or called the hard zone, remain elastic, similar to our previous derivation. Then the number of dislocation within this interface affected zone, IAZ, the dislocation within this region can be derived in our model as shown here. By substitute the yield stress of the fine grain into the applied stress, the number of dislocation can be expressed by this button equation. And you can see that in this equation, only the length parameter are unknown. All the other parameter has been defined and can be measured experimentally. So the next step a very important step is to find the solution for the interface affected zone lens, L0 and the LIAZ. So the stress at the position X, the horizontal axis here, any stress along this axis majorly come from the applied stress and the interface dislocation interaction that can be expressed by this equation. And the critical stress to activate dislocation from the grand boundary H at position zero can presumably equal to the U stress for the cross grain right here. Therefore, by plotting all this condition into the first equation, the end of pi r or the length of the interface affected zone with abundant pi r dislocation, L0 and thus LIAZ can be obtained. The same for the number of dislocation within the IAZ zone can also be derived into this final equation.
So if we consider a more general case for the mixed dissertation, not only the age dissertation as we shown in the plot. So for that kind of condition, the final expression uh, for the number of dislocation within the IAZ zone and the tip stress can be given by this two equation. And similar to the Hoppish relationship, the yield stress of the coarse grain subjected to the additional back stress strengthening is derived here by this equation. Okay, so um, finally, the overall year stress can be predicted by calculating contribution from the fine grain here, the coarse grain here, and the coarse grain subject to the back stress here in red color. We added up all the contribution also, we need to estimate the volume fraction or the L fraction for each grain structure. So you know those kind of fraction, then you can calculate the overall yield stress considering the interaction of the back stress between the fine grain and the coarse grain in this area. So we try to do some experimental confirmation for our model. So usually, uh, conventionally, we do the uniaxial tensor test to get a yield stress and put into the uh, Hopkins relationship to match the uniform grain size with different grain sizes. And here, when you have a heterogeneous microstructure, we use LUR testing to extract the back stress. And the back stress can go back to match some of the microstructure with fine grain or coarse grain or the grain subject to the back stress. So that's how we do the experimental confirmation. We need to ask one question. What kind of alloy that we should select for our experimental confirmation? Well, in previous study, people used to use pure metal, like previous pages to the pure copper or pure titanium. But in our study, we'll find it will be difficult to achieve or maintain such a heterostructure uh, over the processing or over the uh, tensile strengthening, uh, straining. So uh, also next, we can see the single phase like FCC solid solution still the same thing happen. It's still difficult to achieve and maintain the stable heterostructures, structures, which is very important for our uh, comparison between the experiment and the uh, modeling. In addition, we also do not want to get involved in any precipitation hardening to make the strengthening analysis too complicated. So, we try to explore the called multi-principle element alloy. This kind of alloy, because it's quite complicated with multiple principle alloy, it usually show a slower diffusion rate. Um, so the microstructure would evolve a slowly. Also, we try to exclude the severe internal stress uh, by the atomic size or modulus difference. So we need to select some of the element for the uh, multi-principle element alloy to be similar in atomic size. So we choose the equal model cobalt, chromium, nickel, median trivial alloy, uh, which is a single FCC solid solution. Uh, and this three element, cobalt, chromium, nickel, are all Possessing very similar atomic sex sizes. So we can minimize the internal stress in this alloy. And also uh, for these three elements, there is nearly zero mutual heat of mixing. So there won't be any precipitate form. So we will not get the complication to involve the 
precipitation hardening. So by properly uh, proper controlling of the thermal mechanical treatment, a uh, heterogeneous bimodal structure was successfully introduced. Uh, consists of hard uncrystallized grain, about 0.5 micron, and also the soft recrystallized coarse grain, about six micron. And the mic structures is showing here uh, for both the EBSD, SEM, and also TM. And those microstructure parameters for the size, distribution, volume fraction, and so on, uh, they were measured by EBSD as well as uh, TM. Then the sample yield stress was carefully measured for multiple times. And the average yield stress uh, is about 660 MPa as shown here. So then we try to estimate the yield stress by three model, by three different approaches. Of course, the first one will be the most simple one, uh, the conventional approach by rule or mixture. So you, the yield stress contribute by both the uh, fine grains and the hard grain, uh, coarse grain. The second is by the reason very popular, experimental approach by the LUR testing. The third one, of course, by our modified uh, analytical dislocation model. So we're going to compare all our experimental value, 660 MPA yield stress, to those stress uh, proposed by different models. First, from the conventional rule or mixture approaches, uh, you can see you first uh, need to know the stress for the coarse grain and the fine grain, okay? So after knowing the bond fraction, you just add and up. That will give you 527 MPa, you can see this apparently underestimate the yield stress. Uh, so that means there is some additional strengthening involved. For the conventional rule mi mixture, we only consider here hard zone and soft zone. There is no consideration on the interaction between the hard and soft zone called the best stress term. So next we use the uh, very popular experiment approach by the LUR testing. And from the testing, we extract the uh, HDI stress, back stress to full 15 MPa. And plus the lattice friction turn to 18 MPa, the overall is 633 MPa. And it's pretty close to the 660 MPA measured by the tensile uh, testing for the yield stress. Of course, finally, or the third lead, uh, we use our own analytical distribution model. First, we need to uh, calculate quantitatively the uh, IAZ lens. By plugging all the parameters, this lens is calculated to be 4.2 micron, which is about 70% uh, of the grain size of the coarse grain in our sample. In fact, we compare uh, a paper by uh, Ma and his scholars in 2016. Uh, this kind of uh, lens of IAC value will be close to the coarse grain when the strength of the hard zone, or call it fine grain, is about four times of that of the soft zone. That was seen in here and also similar to maybe in our cases. So finally, the yield strength is predicted by our analogy model 
counting everything together. So the final result is 635 MPA. That's predicted by this research. And you can compare to other result, which is please go to the experimental value 660 and also close to the 633 MPA by the LUR testing. So that means our model actually give a very reasonable logical value uh, consistent with uh, many different approaches. So that gives us very confident that the model is pretty meaningful. Here we show the spatial distribution of the dislocation density in three zones. One is IAA zone, one is fine grain zone, one is coarse grain zone. And this had been proposed by uh, Huang and his co author in 2018. And all the results show that a large strand gradient for the interface zone, IAZ can effectively accommodate more dislocation pi-outs than either the fine grain or the coarse grain can, causing more profound strengthening by the IAZ zone, which was not uh, considered uh, years ago. So finally, in conclusion, uh, the current model based on classical single and dislocation pi r theory is quantitatively developed. Consider several HDI characteristics with the microstructure average parameter being measured either by EBSD or by TM, the length of IAZ and the yield stress can be quantitatively determined. Number two, the hard and soft zone with a significant difference in grain size would develop by partial recrystallization in our current equal model single phase FCC global chromium nickel media entry alloy as a representative of heterogeneous grain structures. Number three, the lens of IAZ approximately approach to the mean grain size of the soft or the coarse grain. When the theoretical yield stress of the hard zone is about four times higher than that of the soft zone, this whole thing is well consistent. Finally, compared to conventional rule of mixture, our model can successfully explain and predict the yield stress offered by model heterogeneous grain structure agree well with the LUR result. And the fitting result suggests that the yield stress of the coarse grain strengthened by the dislocation pi RS against the interface can be effectively increased. That's actually the origin for this kind of HDI strengthening. So that close my talk. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the great talk. So, Professor Huang's student and also the first author of this work will be happy to answer the question. Um, so, Randy, you're there, right? Yes. So, let's take some question online first. Um, we have one question from um, Miao Ke Song. Uh, so, he asked, um, when considering back the, the back stress in the model, would be there a correlated forward stress in fine grains? If so, how could you evaluate its effect on the deformation and the mechanical property? Okay, um, thanks for your question. Uh, yes, uh, forward, forward stress plays a very important role during HDI deformation, but not in the early stage of the deformation. Um, here, we try to uh, quantify the uh, HDI stress, but especially in the early uh, 
plastol, elastoplastol deformation. So uh, in the early stage, we don't consider the uh, forward stress in the ear stress. So we eliminate the contribution of the forward stress. Uh, yes, but the forward stress uh, actually plays a, a, com, a contribute majorly in after the ear stress. So we will try to do more work to some do some research related to force stress uh, during the plastic deformation. Okay, so the second question is, um, did you consider the effect of short range order in the mechanical behavior of the MEA? Yes, very good question. Thank you. Uh, the short range order is a typical case reported in a uh, science paper, a uh, nature paper, uh, in uh, maybe two or three years ago. Uh, they report short range order contribute uh, a lot in the mechanical property, especially in its ear stress and as well as the UTS. But the case is uh, the equal molar cobalt nickel chromium median entropy alloy annealed at 900 Celsius degree uh, for one hour, or the short range order will also appear in the sample aged at 600 Celsius degree for 24 hours. For our case, uh, our sample uh, aged at 700 Celsius degree only for one hour. So we think uh, the short range order didn't play a major role in our mechanical property. So we do not consider the contribution of short range order in our sample. Thank you. Okay. All right. So due to the time, uh, we have to move to the next talk. Thank you, Randy. And thank also you. thank you, Professor Huang's talk again.